hi everyone so this this is from speaking and due to this COVID-19 situation I'm going to record some videos with the solutions for PA problem sets so PA 7, 8, 9, 10 I'll be covering in the next videos um, this first video we are going to solve exercise 6.13 so in this exercise we have this circuit here on our left right so it's a BJT it's a NPN BJT because of this arrow here so it's pointing outside of the BJT so it means that the emitter current is flowing outside of the BJT okay now some information that we know out of this circuit is that the voltage at the emitter is minus 0.7 volts and the common emitter current gain is beta equals to 50 so those are the known conditions we also know the values of the resistors the resistors at the collector 5k ohm the resistor at the emitter 10k ohm right so first thing is that in order to apply some common equations that we have in the lecture notes is usually for a DC analysis is that we assume that the BJT is operating in the active mode region right so to verify if the BJT is actually operating in the active mode region one of the condition is that the voltage for the NPN the voltage VBE which is equals to VB minus VE must be I would say greater than 0 0.7 but usually we say that it's equals to 0 0.7 that's one of the approximations that we have right but it could be greater than that but usually 0 0.7 is fine and we know that if we look at the circuit here at the base so if I show you here we know that exactly at the base the potential is zero because it's grounded so this potential here it's zero volts and this one here VE we know from the statement of the problem that's minus 0 0.7 so if we analyze this part here we see that we have zero minus minus 0 0.7 which gives us indeed 0 0.7 0 0.7 volts AVB equals to 0 0.7 volts so this one here allows us to assume that the BGT is actually working in the active mode region it's one of the conditions at the end we have to verify the second one but for this one here it's it's a good guess to assume that it's in the active mode region now because we know that VE is minus 0 0.7 we basically in in VB is equals to 0 right so we know that this potential here at VE so let me pick another color this potential here VE is 0 point, minus 0 0.7 volts we also know that at this terminal here we have minus 10 volts so basically we know the potential at this terminal of the resistor and at this terminal here of the resistor and if you know the potentials at those terminals of a resistor we can apply Ohm's law right to to determine the current IE so IE IE is equals to the potential difference so VE minus minus 10 volts divided by the resistance right 10 K ohm and if you plug in this minus 0 0.7 here basically this minus minus 10 becomes positive so we get 10 here minus 0 0.7 divided by 10 K and that's equals to 0 0.93 milliamps okay so that's the first current 
that we have, i.e. Now, because we know that the current IB, okay, so now IB is equals to IE divided by beta plus 1, right? We can actually calculate the base current, which is that 0 0.93 milliamp divided by beta plus 1, which is 51, that's equals to 18.23 milliamps. That's our second current. Now, for the collector current, if we go down here, we basically know that IE, right, IE, is equals to the sum of IB plus IC, right? If we apply nodal analysis here, basically the current at the emitter should be equal to the current at the base plus the current at the collector. And because we know IE and we know IB from the previous analysis, we can isolate IC here as I, IE minus IB. And this gives us IC equals to those 0 0.93 milliamps minus those 18 point 23 microamps. So let me just go back here so it's not, let me correct, so it's not milliamps, right, it's microamps. Which in this case gives us a total IC, right, that's equals to 0 0.91 17 milliamps. Now it's milli. Okay, so this is the collector. Correct. Okay. And we we are allowed to use these equations here, basically this equation here, right? Because we are assuming active mode operation. Okay. Now, since we know this current IC right since we know this current here IC we can calculate VC by taking the potential here across this resistor and the fact that we know the potential here at this terminal so if we call this one here V5K we can define V5K as the potential difference, so it's 10, right? Because I decided to assign plus here, so it's 10, this potential here, minus the potential here, which in our case is VC. And let me just move this a little bit here. And basically this is the same as the voltage across the resistor, which is 5K times IC. Now, from this configuration here, we can isolate VC. So VC is equals to 10, right, minus 5K times IC. And if we plug in the value of IC here, VC becomes equals to 5.4415 volts. 
So now we have defined the values of the currents, right? IE up here, IB, IC, and VC. But again, to, to make sure that the BGT is actually operating in the active mode region, there's this second condition that we have to analyze that basically says that V C B should be greater than minus 0 0.4 volts. And since we know that V C B is equals to V C minus V B, and we know that VB here is zero, right? Because it's grounded here in the circuit, right? So this one here is zero volts. We basically know that VCB is equal to VC, which means that 4415 should be greater than minus 0 0.4 volts, which is okay from this circuit that we have here. So indeed it's operating in the active mode region and the values of IC, IC, IE, IB and VC are calculated and those are the answers that we get for this for this circuit here.